Okay, hi, this is Brian Harrington. Um, now we're going to be looking at our last phase of our automotive simulation guide, which um, steps into the continuous improvement in performance uh, metrics. So this is an important topic, um, particularly when we're looking at a set of performance met metrics. This is going to give us the tools that we, we require to uh, continuously achieve our, you know, try to uh, continuously achieve our targets and create improvements along the way. So continuum improvements and starts with uh, if the, the, the concept of if you can measure it, you can manage it. So most of our um, plants are going to be, have systems in place that collect a lot of real-time shop floor metrics. And that could be our overall um, work working and waiting and blocked and, and downtime. Um, so there, there'll be uh, a lot of uh, data that'll be coming at us. And when we take this data and we can actually come up with a set of performance, performance metrics, and that could include our quality, our scrap, our availability. So we'll look at um, uh, various common metrics that um, that are used within manufacturing facilities. So once we have these metrics in place, this is how we can come up with the improvement uh, plans that lead us into um, the continuous improvement. So what should we be measuring? Um, and these are some of the most common. We talked about in our two uh, other sectors of design and operational procedures the jobs per hour, or vehicles per hour. Obviously, keeping um, that our eyes on that um, is 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 uh, key. Um, our financial costs that that that's um, particularly important um, in our design phase when we're purchasing assets, but it's also within um, our overall operating procedures. Are we still um, achieving our our uh, costs? And, and our return on investment on that on a particular assets. Um, our first pass yield, that, that looks at quality, that looks at the effects of uh, scrap and rework items. You know, um, overall equipment effectiveness, OEE, that, that picks up the uh, facets of availability, performance, and quality. And then our schedule inheritance, um, our late units within the sequence causing us um, problems with meeting our customer order or order to the delivery. Uh, how long does it take us to design a particular vehicle? That's often referred to as dock to dock or the overall uh, time and system. And of course, our resource utilization. Um, how are we, are we um, utilizing our assets um, or our operators um, in, a, in a fair fashion? achieving you know, possibly 80% utilization. Um, are they balanced, in other words? So jobs per hour, we looked at this um, uh, earlier, and, and this was our example. Um, simulation always um, provides us a nice a runtime chart of our overall throughput. And, and often, um, this is one of the metrics that we're going to be looking at. And we can pinpoint when particular points fall out of our, our control limits of saying that 36 jobs per hour is, is an issue. And what caused that? So we can go in there into the model and find out exactly what caused this. Was it a set of, of simultaneous events that occurred? Was it, was it one particular event that caused this? And can we minimize it? What can we do? Or what do we have to do to react to, to repair this? So, so the time to, re, re, to react to a particular event that caused us some sufficient throughput loss. So in, in this case, it might not be catastrophic. But if we, if we ran this um, and found out some catastrophic downtime that occurred us a real lengthy stay here, what are we going to do to um, protect that? So our, our overall throughput, um, often we, we, um, it's, it's, it's a good idea to graph and chart um, your metrics. So when you get a, a column of data, first thing you want to do is always put it in a, in a graph form. 
and and get as many as many statistics as we can on it. So so we take our graph and, or our, our data and we can um, create different um, charts. Often throughput um, it comes into uh, a, a beta distribution where we have some tail that is our low runners and some maximum which is our design rate that is its capability that it can do at its best it, that it can do and then we're going to um, see our average um, throughput and this this usually can be just easily captured within just three ob simulation objects just that a simple uh, buffer that holds our at our pay point that holds units for 60 minutes then pulls them out at zero cycle time and the actual work complete metric actually even keeps track of our time and system as well, um, which is a, another metric. But um, particularly right here, we're looking at our, our throughput. So the um, simulate has a nice uh, built-in uh, feature for keeping track of our um, some of our uh, financial metrics. In this particular instance, we can actually have a capital cost and then put uh, the usage cost um, per time unit in and, and the usage cost per unit. So we can, we can actually look at our return, when are we gonna achieve our return on investment, particularly on, on ex, uh, obviously on expensive assets. Um, so each one of our line might have some of these financial um, metrics that are particularly um, key uh, when we're um, close to our, when we're in our design phase and our operational procedures, uh, keeping our eye on um, the overall profit of the system. First pass yield, so this is, this is um, switching gears over to a little bit of our quality side. Um, so first pass yield is, a, is a, a good metric that just keeps track of the, 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 the number of parts that have, have passed through a particular workstation and we're going to keep track of how many of them were good, um, whether or not uh, one of them was, or, or the, the, the number of them that were scrapped, and also the number that actually re, that were um, reworked. And so basically, we're, we're finding out the, the, one, the parts that were actually good, and minus the ones that had to be reworked or scrapped, divided by the total number of parts. And this gives us a percentage of the, the first pass yield, which really represents the number of good units that have passed through uh, the very fast, the very first time. They didn't need to take a second pass or a third pass due to quality issues, or they ultimately were not scrapped. So obviously, the, the goal here is to uh, minimize waste uh, with respect to scrap and rework, because rework, obviously, we get, takes time and it's going to um, possibly um, reduce our overall throughput. Overall equipment effectiveness. This is a uh, pretty um, key metric in the sense that it does pick up our availability, our performance, and our quality. So when we're looking at overall equipment effectiveness, we're, we're, back, we're basically we're looking at the overall operating time. So this, this shows us the, the full window of, of time that is potentially there for us to build units. But when we add uh, planned downtime into uh, the overall picture, that represents um, morning breaks, uh, lunch, afternoon breaks. So we know that there's going to be planned downtime that's going to reduce that overall time um, to build units. So that's going to be, so now our, 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 our window um, is becoming smaller. We know that downtime exists. So when a, when a, a uh, line experiences mean time between failures and mean time to repair, um, downtimes occur. So that actually is now reducing our window of operating time even smaller, because once we come up with those figures, um, it's, they're gonna occur. They might be random, uh, stochastic in nature, but they do occur. We know that once we have facilities designed and lines operating um, with each other, they cause weights and blocks. Um, that is usually what we refer to performance loss, or when a system goes down, it has to start back up. So it might have a little bit of a ramp up time to, to achieve its optimal 
uh, line rate. So performance loss um, particularly comes into play when we're looking at um, our weights and blocks. So again, our operating, our net operating time now, the overall window to actually build units is becoming smaller. Then if we look at quality um, portion of it, quality could be some of our, our reworked units take longer, um, scrap losses, so the part actually is just scrapped and just thrown out of the system. So again, that's chipping into our overall productive time. So now we just have to actually this small amount of time or relative to where we started off to actually build units. So overall equipment effectiveness, very key metric because it does look at uh, our downtime. It does look at how these systems are performing w with one another as far as weights and blocks and um, performance losses. And it keep, keeps track of our uh, quality. So key metric, easy to uh, uh, track within a discrete event simulation. And often this is closely related to our working time. Uh, that simulation picks up automatic for us, uh, multiplied by uh, the actual quality loss. Schedule inheritance percent. So often this is um, uh, due to late units in the system. So if a, if a particular vehicle got out of sequence or had to go through a um, parallel line that um, was running slower, um, but for some reason it got out of sequence, so typical causes for late units, repair loops, parallel lines, quality tests, sometimes the couplers um, with shortcuts. So if a vehicle goes into a buffer and there's various ways that it can actually get released out of that buffer, such as overhead mezzanines or large storage banks, often parts can get out of, uh, out of sequence there. And in some cases, uh, like an early unit, that might not be a problem within our sequence. But usually late units are a problem. So schedule inheritance is really is a, a, a simple metric in the sense that it's this the actual production uh, divided by the scheduled production um, times times 100 is going to give us that percent. So um, often in manufacturing, like I say, late units um, can cause issues. Early units usually um, aren't aren't uh, uh, too much of a, a concern. So our next metric that's um, uh, key is the this overall time and system. So how long does it take us to actually build a vehicle? Um, sometimes it's referred to dock to dock, uh, referring to the loading dock where raw, raw materials um, come into the facility all the way out to our pay point or our shipping part, part point. So sometimes we might actually pick up a control part and that says, you know, that, that we're not actually going all the way to some of our raw material, but the control part might be, let's say, where the vehicle gets, the body gets placed on the pallet. We want to know once it's placed on the pallet um, and it, and it uh, is now flowing through our body shop and, and then we'll keep track of it all the way to where it gets sent off to the paint shop. So various different points um, where we can measure um, time and system. And, and if we have some of the units that are taking longer than others, they could be causing potential bottlenecks. And these bottlenecks could actually uh, move around with this, within the system. So rework items, uh, shift patterns, product, different product variants, um, line, waiting on line side inventory, all these things can affect our dock to dock or our time and system. So resource utilization, we always want to keep our eye on our resources. We usually don't want to have our assets and our robots, um, all our expensive manufacturing um, equipment waiting due to an operator or waiting due to line side material getting delivered. So um, keeping track of our utilization and looking at if we have some operators that are are operating, you know, you know, maybe we have above eighty percent. Maybe that is going to be too sensitive or risky for us. So, 
we might want to, at that point, rebalance some of our line operators. So if we have shifts in our production schedule, is that affecting our, our operators? Um, and do we have them um, and their, all their tasks uh, balanced correctly? So we can uh, assure that we're not going to be, uh, that, that a particular operator is not pacing the line. And that, that comes into play from our operators that are actually building the product to all the way to our maintenance crew. So a little bit close up on some of the metrics that we discussed. If I, in our body shop model, if I zero it in on just like a particular line, like line 15, this is a good example where this actually is a particular line that has a uh, weld and spec. So every so often a vehicle get, might get pulled off just to inspect the welds and then get reintroduced into the line. So, um, and, and this, this particular, it shows a, a buffer, this possibly might be eight units. Uh, uh, so we have a buffer here of eight units. The units even here might get out of sequence unless we um, force them to maintain sequence because they might take a shortcut or they might travel the full length. So there's quite a few different um, concepts um, or, or potential areas where sequence can get out, out of sequence or a late unit. Um, due to the buffer or due to the inspect. Um, but each one of our lines, we, here's the example of how we can keep track of, of these metrics. So we can look at the jobs per hour at, at this particular line or the overall facility. So in this instance, it was at 48.8. Um, we could be keeping track of our uh, financial costs along the way. So at, uh, for running it for X amount of time, this might have been uh, a three-month run or a half a year run, whatever it might be for our runtime, and this would uh, show our potential profit at for the facility or even for this particular line. Our first pass yield. So um, we learned that um, vehicle or vehicles get that get flagged for quality issues such as scrap or rework. Um, is going to impact our first pass yield. In this case, we're showing a first pass yield of 97%. Our overall equipment effectiveness, that is our, our availability, which is this, this line might be running at 96% of availability. It might have um, the performance of 85%. So that uh, picks up our weight and block um, together. And so an overall of 85% um, as far as performance. And then, I'm, so it could be showing 3% rework. So that is 97% uh, quality. And you can see that the overall OEE would be uh, just below uh, 0.8 um, when we multiply all three of those uh, factors together. Schedule inheritance, um, this is just looking at the number of units that have passed um, through the system um, that we're on time. So it looks like we're 83.7% of the uh, meeting our overall um, schedule. And we are getting uh, 1,325 units that were deemed late or out of sequence. The timing system or the dock to dock, we're showing an average of 299 minutes um, in the system. And this particular asset right here, uh, might have uh, an overall availability of 87, might be deemed as high, and 2% uh, travel, so traveling between the line 15 and the inspect if he's actually doing that shared uh, task. Okay, so that covered um, some of our basic um, performance metrics that we put in place um, to achieve um, our targets while we're running a, a facility. And often, often these metrics are discussed in weekly quality uh, meetings um, that the plant might have. And these meetings are where we come up with concepts for implementing continuous improvements and how we, to, we run this plant and to achieve our targeted throughputs and also how we go about implementing uh, continuous improvements.